We've got a good, clean starting point here again. My good friend Mike Fairborn out there in the chat. Thanks for all of you being here, and thanks for your patience. As I was saying, not the greatest technician when it comes to ThinkScript, but I always like to fill in for Ken Rose because it challenges me to learn more about it. So I hope that you'll indulge my journey of self-discovery today. A couple of quick technical and housekeeping items that we need to make sure that we're aware of as we get into this discussion today. Remember that everything we talk about simply for illustrative and educational purposes only, not a recommendation or an endorsement of any particular security strategy or chart pattern. Remember that options carry a high level of risk. They're not suitable for all investors. Make sure that you're aware of the characteristics and risks of standardized options before you trade any options. Remember that Schwab does not recommend the use of technical analysis, the sole means of investment research. We're going to be using the Thinkorswim desktop software platform today, the paper money version of that. Not a guarantee of future success out there in the real world. Um, it is a great learning environment. So be aware of that uh, as you move your practice from uh, paper trading to live trading. There may be some differences. Uh, remember that uh, the things that we talk about are not guaranteed. The scripts that we talk about, not guaranteed for time or accuracy. Um, remember that investing involves risk, including the loss of principal and past performance of any security strategy script or anything else does not guarantee future results or success. And I like this slide that Ken puts in here, which is the steps to scripting, because this always helps me to kind of structure my thought process, which is to first identify the goal. What is it that we want to accomplish? And then figure out how scripting can get us to that goal and, and then kind of put together an outline and walk through the process. So I want to kind of go on that journey of self-discovery here uh, as we go through this process. I'm going to shift over to uh, the Thinkorswim desktop software platform here really quickly, and we're going to pop into the platform, um, and, and this is where we're going to spend our time. Now, as I do that, really good opportunity for you to click on that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. Uh, that lets you set up notices and alerts for all of the great webcasts that we've got here on the Trader Talks webcast channel. Best thing is, it's at no cost to you. So, Let's kind of talk through this, this thought process, right? Um, I, I, whenever I need, to be fair, I'm going to be completely fair and honest, whenever I need a custom script built that does something specific because I have an idea, I generally will go to Ken Rose uh, and, and ask him to help me build that script or just ask him to build that script for me. And then a couple of days later, he comes back and he says, try this. And then we talk about it and he tweaks it. But I wanted to kind of think through this from the thought process of how we go about making a decision and building a script and using some of the tools that are available here on uh, the Thinkorswim platform in the script, think scripting language. And the think script language is peppered throughout uh, the Thinkorswim platform, whether we realize it or not. So we might be thinking about something as simple as being alerted to a price movement uh, around a particular level. So I'm looking at here, in this case, uh, Con Ed, the, the symbol ED. Again, not a recommendation uh, for uh, anything to happen here or anything else, simply an illustrative example. But I wanted to say, what if I'm thinking about the possibility of this little bit of a breakout here looking for a breakout above this next level of resistance. And I'm just going to draw that line in here. And again, remember, these are theoretical, technical analysis is the, not the only way to evaluate the market. So I can do a couple of things. I can alert myself about that circumstance, right? I could, I could simply draw the line on the chart and I could come back to this on a watch list and watch for that. I could put a note on the chart or more importantly, for what our discussion is going to talk about today is I could create a ThinkScript generated um, alert. Now, we might not think about this in terms of this being ThinkScripting, but it is, in fact, kind of the genesis of that. And in fact, this is something that is relatively new 
to the Thinkorswim platform as a function of greater utilization of the think scripting language. So I've got this trend line that I've drawn in here, right? And I've drawn this horizontal trend line. Uh, starts on the left-hand side at 92.73. It goes over to the right-hand side at 92.73. I've drawn it in that particular area. And the, the cool thing is, if I come to that trend line and I hover over that trend line and I right-click on the trend line, there's a couple of things that I can do. I can activate it. I can edit the properties. I can remove it. I can duplicate it extend it to the left and the right. I can redraw it as a channel because it's a trend line. But the other thing that I can do, and this is fairly new, I mean, this is new within a couple of different releases here, is this little setup right here that says, create alert with drawing, right? So if I left click on that, uh, on that selection, then, what I'm doing, in, and for those of you that have done ThinkScript before, you're going to recognize some of the common elements here in this structure. So this is a kind of a pre-packaged structure of ThinkScripting. So it says, notify me on a specific drawing, and it's going to take an intra bar price. So it's going to take an intra, in this case, since the aggregation period is one day, it's going to take an intraday price crossing. It, it, well, we can choose. I want to see it cross above a trend line. In this case, the trend line that I've got on the, on the chart that is named trend line two. Now, now, we can do this really quickly. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go back to that trend line and I'm going to edit the properties and I'm going to name this. And I'm going to say, we're going to call this uh, breakout, breakout one. So I've just named that trend line breakout one, and I'm going to click on okay. Now that trend line has a name and I can see that when I hover over the data box and I can right click on that again, and I can go to create alert withdrawing. And now I can see that I've got the same thing, right? Same thing that's come up. Intra bar price crosses I'm going to change that to crosses above breakout. So this is that if then else type of logic that's built into the ThinkScript language and into many programming language, right? If the intra bar price crosses above breakout one, we've identified that trend line right here, then do something. The then do something here is alert me, right? And notify with, um, you know, a bell or sending a text message or whatever that might be in terms of the, the way that I want to be notified that that alert happens. And so I can go ahead and I can click on create. And now I've got that alert that I've built. And many of you are familiar with creating alerts. We can do alerts like that uh, in, in a variety of different ways. But the fact that it's able to take that named trend line and use that as the conditional for the if then statement got me to start thinking about this, right? Started me thinking about, huh, that's interesting. Because you know what might happen here in this particular case, if I scroll down and zoom in a little bit, is if the end of this trend line is right here, because if I hover my name, my, my cursor over that trend line, that trend line you see ends on 4.30.24, on the end of, at the end of, uh, of April. So, and that's just because I arbitrarily drew it in there. So now what might happen is if the price of the stock, let me grab my annotation tool here, were to do this, do something like this, bounce up and bounce down and bounce up and bounce down and kind of bounce along here and then break out. If it were to do that after the end of that trend line, after the end of that trend line, right? Then that alert's not gonna trigger because it's not crossing that specific trend line. Does that make sense? Because that specific trend line only exists within the time span of the time that we've got that trend line on there. So if I right click 
and go to edit properties, it exists from the dates that I drew in there arbitrarily, 125.24 to 430.24, right? So that trend line expiring, essentially, you're being done, gets us to the point where that alert may become less valuable because the cross above there is tied specifically to that to that uh, created trend line. Now I can solve that problem one way in a short term uh, basis. I can right click on that line and I can extend that trend line out to the right. And that way, if I go to the trend line properties, I can see that that goes out, extended out to the right and that trend line is still there. And so that will still trigger. Now that's kind of interesting to me because I thought, wow, maybe that solves some of the problems or some of the challenges in terms of scripting um, a breakout above or below a particular level or breakdown below a particular level of support because I can draw the line, I can visualize that line in there and I can say, all right, cool. I know where that line is. I know where that level is. Visually, I can identify it so I can build a condition for an order. The problem is, the challenge that I realized, it's okay because I can create this alert, and this alert doesn't take any action other than ringing a bell, right? The alert doesn't create any action other than ringing a bell, but it doesn't actually act as a conditional. So let's say I wanted to buy the stock, right? when it broke above that particular level. Now, there's a couple of things that I could do. I could go here to buy, and I could create an order to buy, and we'll just edit this order to buy. And again, remember, this is for illustrative and educational purposes only. And I could say, all right, my, my price level is here at 92.73, and I could make that a buy stop um, at 97 or 92. 73 and then that nine that buy stop would theoretically trigger and activate at a market price because that's what that order turns into buy stop says stop wait until the price of the stock goes through 92.73 then enter the trade and it would do that as a market order and that's fine that's a buy stop and we could do it that way right um but the other way that we could accomplish this um, is we could create this. And, and the risk in that is that that price may fill, that, that order may fill significantly higher, right? If the price of the stock moves up uh, in a fast market, we know that stops don't guarantee the execution price once they are activated. Um, but we could change this perhaps to a market order. Now, now this carries some of the same risks, right? This carries some of the same risks in creating the order this, the way that we're gonna do this. But what I can do is I can come over to the gear icon and, and I'll just kind of show you where that navigation is because it's kind of hidden. If we go right here to this little box in the right-hand corner there on our order line, and uh, we're going to zoom in on that for you here for just a sec. You can see where that empty box is. I haven't added a conditional yet. So once I add a conditional, then that gear icon will be persistent. But if I hover over that little gear icon right there, you can see that it pops up and I can left click on it and I can open up this order rules box, which now looks fairly similar to some of the other types of scripting uh, boxes that we've seen before, right? So now my price rule for this order is a market order and I could choose other types of orders here as well. But this gives me the ability to make this conditional, perhaps even a little bit more specific, right? So this is kind of the next step in the thought process. So I'm thinking, oh, cool. What if I could take that trend line definition because I know that that trend line is defined as breakout one, could I use that in creating an order specific, right? Could I make that a conditional order specific? So I could come down here to the submit rules and I could say, submit this market order 
when ed marks but i'm not going to use mark now i could do it this way right i could simply say mark at or above that threshold 92 73 and that's great and that's probably to be fair the simplest way to accomplish this process right so if we were to say all right fine 92 73 there's our entry threshold so now if we look through this order what that means is it's it's this is roughly the scripted equivalent of saying buy stop but don't submit this order buy this stock at a market order but don't do it until that threshold is met or exceeded so that's probably the simpler way to accomplish this so i was thinking though you know what maybe simple doesn't teach me the whole thing here so i'm going to click on this instead of choosing mark i'm going to choose study now there's a couple of them that are already already figured into this discussion um, that are already pre-built generally. Simple moving average, volume average, Bollinger Bands. But the cool thing is we can click right here on edit. And now what we can do is we've got this study order condition dialog that gives us the ability to create whatever custom threshold for entry or threshold for exit or threshold for action that conditional on the if then else statement that we want to create right so now we're starting to get into the the kind of nitty gritty of this and and like i said at the outset of this discussion i am not the greatest technician but i'm willing to click on buttons until i learn and that's a great way to go about learning uh, some of these components of the ThinkScript language in the Thinkorswim platform. And if you do it in paper money, as you're learning, then that helps to solidify that knowledge without the fear of placing a trade uh, that is in live money. So I don't want to trigger this order based on the simple moving average. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a condition. Now, I thought it might be really easy, right? I thought it would be really easy using this condition wizard if I could simply call out this breakout level, right? And, um, and, and just use that same kind of intraday thought process, right? Intraday bar crosses above that trend line that would be pretty easy to do right if i click on add condition then i start to have this condition editor and it would be really cool if i could just click on a drop down and say choose what i want to have happen and then set up the condition right well it turns out that it's not quite so easy right it turns out that it's not quite so easy I want to have price be the director of action here, right? So if price moves above that trend line, then enter the trade, right? Then submit the order to enter the trade at a market order. So I can simply say price, and I'm just going to say ask because I'm looking for this to happen intraday. So what might happen is if the spread widens out, that might hit, and then it fills in a market order. And that can happen in a, in a fast move, moving market. So here's my ask price. And if I say, if the ask crosses above, right? Crosses above, now I have to set the threshold. Now this is where I thought, wow, this would be really easy if I could just simply click on the drop down and plug in breakout one as a name and be able to use that drawing. And you probably can, but I think there's a separation here uh, in between those two. So now let's think about how we might go about accomplishing this um, in, in a very simple way uh, to, to get to the goal that we want, right? That's kind of that order of logic that Ken talked about figure out what the goal is and then figure out how think scripting can help do it. So I could simply say, you know what, if ask price crosses above value and my value is going to be 93 
or 92.73, right? 92.73. And I hit enter within one bar, click on save. And now I've got that threshold, right? Okay. So if that ask price crosses above 92.73, and then I can click on, oh, hmm. Interesting. Right? So I'm running into a challenge here. Huh. So that tells me that I've got to do something here to fix this. Right? So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to walk through this again. So what that tells me is that probably the easiest way to do this is to do it the easy way. If ED marks or even asks above this level, 92.73, then use that. Oh, see, there's the reason why. We can't use ask. Okay, so now I've learned something about this process. And so I can go back to the gear icon. I can bring back up my order rules and I can say, if this study, and we'll add, our study once again we'll edit and we'll say whoops i'm going to delete this simple moving average we'll add the condition and we'll go to price okay and now i might have to simply use uh that closing price right so we can use that closing price okay and crosses above my value which was ninety two seventy three, and click on save. And now I have that value, right? Now I have that uh, order in place based on the study that we've built. Okay, so if that study that we created. And, and the point of this is not that, that I'm specifically creating um, this specific study in this particular circumstance, but my point in doing this was to learn the process. So now that that study that I created is true, then that order would be submitted once that condition is true and I can click on save. And then I can come down here to confirm and send and I can read this alert and make sure that I'm aware of that, that study-based orders can carry specific or special risks. And the reason that this becomes, I think, helpful for me as a trader is because I'm learning that think scripting logic so that I can become more complex. Now, it would be really cool and really easy if we were able to just say, um, let's call that trend line. And in fact, some of you may even know a way to accomplish doing that, calling that trend line name and putting that in as the conditional. All right. So we can do that. We can build the study to enter the trade based on a particular value. We could base that entry on, because here's the cool thing that we can do in doing that. We go back to that trade tab, or actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's go back to the trade tab. Here's our order. Let's click on the ask price and let's make this conditional once again. We'll bring up our order rules. And so my thought was, okay, well, what if I also want to add another conditional to this mix? So we'll keep this at a market order <clears throat> and we'll say, all right, if ED uh, marks or studies, above let's edit our study and let's whoops cancel that let's delete it we'll add that condition and we'll go price close crosses above that value that we specified which was 90 to oops my keyboard's sticking 92 73, 92, 73, there we go. Oh, it's because my numlock was not on. All right, and we click on save. All right, now we've got one condition, 
Okay. And the cool thing is now we could simply call it good right there. We could add another conditional right here, but then we start to get into piling that up. So what if we were to do this? Let's edit this study. Let's see if we can edit this study again, right? Here's our close crosses above 9273. And we're going to add the condition that says, all right, fine. If let's do this, I'm going to MACD, M, A, C, D. And by the way, I learned something today as I was practicing for this webcast that if you are searching for a particular, let's say, study, and you have this look up a study box, instead of just typing in the name or scrolling down through this list, I learned something very interesting. That if you click on the drop down arrow one more time here for this box, it brings up the general categories of studies that you can choose from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down through this list and I'm gonna find momentum studies and I'm gonna find the MACD histogram. And I'm gonna say, all right, fine. What I want to have happen is the MACD turning green or being green, right? I wanna see that MACD histogram showing positive momentum, right? And now what I'm looking at doing is showing that up signal being true. So if the MACD histogram up signal is true, meaning it's positive, green momentum is true within one bar. So now I've got two conditions that are set in this mix, right? I've got the two conditions that exist here. I've got to kind of stretch this out a little bit more so that we can see the second one because I'm displaying that condition preview down here at the bottom. But now you can see the two conditions, the close crosses above 9273 and the MACD histogram up signal is true. Now I've got momentum and price as conditions for this order to occur and I can click on OK. And now that study is in place and I can kick, click on save. And uh, now that order is in place and we can click on confirm and send. Now, yeah, <laughs> uh, Kevin, great, great thought process there. And this is one of the ways that you could go about accomplishing that, right? To exit if below the five day low. So find the study that can define that five day low use that as the study conditional. So let's see about, uh, see how we can do that. I know there's there are studies that, uh, that will accomplish that. Anyway, there's our order, right? Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, all right, cool, that works really well um, for uh, that type of order, right? For uh, getting into the underlying stock because I'm basing the, trigger on the movement of the underlying stock. And as a matter of fact, uh, a number of years ago, Scott Thompson and Dave Johnson and myself used to teach a workshop, a four day live workshop, where we would talk about these conditional orders and we would talk about using them to create flag pattern uh, entries and exits. But one of the questions came up, can you use this to trigger an option trade? And so the, the answer to that is yes. And so we're gonna talk through this really quickly uh, from this same thought process, right? In, in terms of scripting that conditional order into an option trade, right? So we can say, all right, cool. Let's go to the 21 June expiration and I'm gonna look at buying a call option, right? So I'm gonna simply create, again, remember this is for illustrative and educational purposes only. I'm gonna create the order to buy a call option. In this case, an in the money call option. Remember, if you're gonna trade options, they do carry risk. There's the risk of loss. And uh, make sure that you're aware of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. They are not suitable for all traders. But I'm gonna left click on that order to create the order to buy the option, okay? So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I could make that a 
market order, and I could come over here to the conditional, and I could say, all right, fine. I only want to buy this call option if the stock marks at or above 92.73, right? 92.73. And there's our conditional order to get into the stock, right? There's the conditional order to get into the, excuse me, into the option trade, given the conditions on the underlying stock, um, which is fine because that type of conditional is helpful for being able to get into uh, an option trade based on what the underlying stock is doing. But then the question came to me, what if I wanted to base my entry into this option, okay? What if I wanted to base my entry into this option trade based on a condition of the option contract itself, okay? Based on a condition of, of the option contract itself. So let's say for instance, and, and I don't know why you would want to do this, but this is a hypothetical. So right now, this 87 half strike call option has an option delta of 74 cents, okay? Has an option delta of 74 cents. So remember delta is a measurement of the sensitivity of the option premium to a dollar movement or to price movement in the underlying stock. So as the price of the stock in this case goes up, then that delta is gonna increase. So let's conceive of a condition where the trader maybe wants to get into this long call option, but only when it's gone to a de an option delta of 74 cents. Well, how do you create that type of entry condition using ThinkScripting? So I figured out the detail that we need to have in this place in terms of using this conditional order is the option code itself, the information from the option and how we would call that particular contract. So I'm gonna change one of my columns in my option chain layout. In this case, I'm gonna take my extrinsic column and I'm gonna come down here to instrument details and I'm gonna select I'm gonna select the option code. Now here's the cool thing. You see this option code? That gives you the specifications of the option, right? So that is the specific call out and name of that option. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna right click on that option code and I'm gonna come down here where it says copy that code, copy, dot ed 24062 1c 87 half i'm going to copy that now that's copied to the clipboard right now that's copied to the clipboard now what i can do is i can come over here to this condition that little gear icon i can come over here and i can say symbol instead of ed i can hit control v and paste in the option code. And now I can say, all right, Delta at or above 75 cents, 0.75, enter, right? Now I'm triggering that order to enter the option code, the option trade based on the Delta of the option. Now, the other way that you could accomplish that, instead of plugging delta in right there, is go to the study. So what we've done is we've used the same things that we learned about in being able to create a scripted study condition based on option delta as a trigger to submit the order to get into the option. So I'm gonna click on save. Again, I'm gonna go to confirm and send, read through the alerts, make sure that I'm aware of the restrictions here, right? And the alerts, make sure that I'm familiar with that order. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on send and fire that order off. And again, illustrative and educational purposes only. Guys, I'll tell you what, this, this journey of discovery kind of took us a roundabout way because we went from 
placing trades or, or, or creating an alert based on the drawing to placing a trade based on the level of the drawing to placing a trade based on a study based on that level of the drawing to placing an option trade based on that price level to pre placing an option trade based on the delta of the option contract itself. So what, what I hope that I've impressed upon you is that there's lots of different ways to do things here in uh, the think scripting world with those little fragments that exist around the Thinkorswim platform. And it is a great opportunity when you can, in paper money, think through a problem and work through the scripting languages. And so what I want to encourage you to do, if you're like me and not the greatest at coding, is just play with the the, the tools that are there and see how it uh, see how long it takes you to become familiar with and comfortable with and practice and try. So that goes along with what Ken uh, has put into this steps to, to scripting. Apply the think school, the think script tools, write the custom scripts, and then test what is written related to the goal. Does it accomplish the goal? So my call to action for all of you is to go out and practice. By the way, one other call to action, follow me, follow Mike out there on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, I'm at Ben Watson CS, Mike is at Mike Fairborn CS, and Ken Rose, where you're going to find a lot of these scripts, at Ken Rose CS. Guys, thank you so much for being here. My thanks to Mike Fairborn for answering questions. Thanks for going with me on this little journey of self-discovery when it comes to ThinkScript. And thanks to our great production staff for helping out today. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.